when you were a foreign correspondent, you were basically dealing with, you know, big shots going out and all this, and also the very close foreign press corps. But there wasn't a lot of mixing it up with journalists, indigenous journalists from the area. So I got to know more about the media, the world media, from New York, sitting in my little cubicle, than I ever did as a foreign correspondent. Um, and one of the constant frustrations was hearing them say, we haven't got any equipment, we haven't got any training, and the AP assigned me to find out whether how much training was going on in developing countries. And in those days, we used the term third world without blinking an eye. It was as politically incorrect as the Center for Foreign Journalists. I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, but so I, while I was world news editor, I did this study. It took about six months using all our correspondents and our bureaus overseas and said, what kind of training is there and who's doing it? And, you know, I delivered this um, paper basically saying uh, there's not a great deal of training, but those who are doing it are the British and the Europeans. Uh, you're not getting anything from the United States. The U.S. was doing nothing. And we had the largest and wealthiest media in the world. We were not sharing. So after that meeting, or at while I was in Talwa, this little tank of a fellow, bald, thick, coke glass, glasses, who uh, I had seen his picture, but I'd never met him. His name was Tom Winship, and he was the legendary editor of the Boston Globe. He won 14 Pulitzers in his 20-year reign. Um, came up to me and says, said, Let's go for a walk, young fella. Basically, he said, look, he said, I'm ending my career at the Globe because they have a mandatory retirement of 65. Uh, and I want to do something else. I want to do something larger than just Boston and national government. And you seem to know something about the international side, so let's talk about what we can do. Shortly thereafter, Tom and I stayed in touch, and he introduced me to Jim Ewing, who's a publisher of a small but very high-quality newspaper in southern New Hampshire. <coughs> and Jim was a, the publisher, i.e. businessman. In late 1984, I submitted my resignation to the AP. Tom, and, Tom was uh, basically saying goodbye and taking his victory laps for the Globe. and. Uh, Jim was in semi-retirement as a publisher. He turned it over to his son-in-law. So we basically could devote full time to a new place. Now, the center actually began in March. I moved down from New York. And uh, in March of 1985 is when the center actually began. The founding was in 84, and that's the incorporated papers. Shortly thereafter, we had a vision and the vision was quite clear, which was to basically share American know-how uh, with journalists from other countries who needed it. And it was very democratic in concept. We weren't just dealing with, with countries and news organizations that were independent. We knew that would have been unrealistic, but also counterproductive, because many of the journalists in these countries worked for state news agencies or uh, very tightly controlled news organizations that we were dealing with journalists, not with institutions. 